everyone, it's Ashley and today I'm here to bring you my September slash October slash first half of November book haul. I have a ton of books to show you guys today. Some of them were sent to me by publishers for review, a lot of them I bought for myself, but I have a lot. So this video is going to be quite long, I apologize in advance for that. Also I'm not going to go crazy in depth describing all of the books for you because I have so many to show you, but I will however take the time to leave Goodreads links for every single book in the description box down below in case you want to check them all out. I feel like my battery is going to die before I finish filming this video. I'm going to start with all of the books that I bought for myself this month, beginning with Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. This is the author's preferred text. As you guys know, Neil Gaiman is easily one of my top favorite authors of all time. I love everything he does. I have read Neverwhere before. I read it like a really, really, really long time ago, but I realized that I don't remember everything that happened, and apparently the author's preferred text is actually quite different from the one that I would have read previously, and I remember loving Neverwhere. Also, Neverwhere is Rainbow Rowell's favorite novel just pushing it for you guys. So I'm really really excited to dive back into the story and see the way that Neil Gaiman originally wanted it to be told. It basically follows a main character who finds out that there is this like whole other world that exists underneath London and he gets like pulled into it and it's basically that like story of yes magic exists in the real world you just have to see it and I just I'm, I just love stories like that. Then I bought a book that is basically the complete opposite of Neverwhere except for that it also takes place in England and that is Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. I have never read Bridget Jones Diary. I've also never seen the movie. Also no one has ever spoiled the plot of the story for me. So I don't really know anything that happens in this aside from that it's supposed to be a romantic comedy. This is one of those like rom-com books that everyone swears by. And I really really want to see the movie, but I don't want to see the movie until I read the book. So I finally picked this up because normally around Christmas time I'm in the mood for some really good like romantic e comedy kind of reads, and I actually haven't read any rom-com reads since you Me Before You, so I'm excited for this. Then I picked up Green Rider by Kristen Britton. Uh, I actually don't really know anything about this. It is a fantasy novel that one of my best friends Kendra swears by. It's one of her favorite fantasy series. It has a female main character, a female writer. All of those things for me are huge. You don't find a lot of female writers and or female main characters in the fantasy genre. And she told me that it's like absolutely amazing. So I'm doing that thing where I jump into the book without really knowing anything about the book. But I'm really excited about it and generally Kendra and I absolutely love the exact same books so I trust her judgment highly. Next I got a book that I have been waiting for for so long and I finally got The 12 Days of Dash and Lily. If you guys know this about me and if you don't you will now, Dash and Lily's Book of Dares is easily one of my favorite books of all time. Definitely my favorite holiday read. I reread it every Christmas. I love it so much and when I heard that there was going to be a sequel I I literally jumped up and down in the middle of my bookstore. I just was so excited. It finally came in a few weeks ago and I picked it up and I started reading it and then I realized that I should probably reread the first one before I read this one. So I forced myself to put it down but I will be picking it up so soon and I'm so 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 excited about it. It's like literally just if you haven't read Dash and Lily's Book of Dares it is the cutest holiday story and it's like 200 pages. You could finish it in like a day. I would highly recommend. Then I picked up Warp by Lev Grossman. I'm not gonna lie Originally I was attracted to this book because the cover is just gorgeous and then I read the back and I bought it immediately. I rarely do that. I rarely pick up a book, read the back and I'm like nope I need this right now even though it's $20 and like 150 pages. But with this one I just I felt like I just it was weird. I, I read the back and I was like I have to read this book. It's basically about like these 20 somethings who feel really really adrift in their life but they have these crazy magical worlds going on inside their head that keep them going and I just feel like it's going to be this really really well done character driven like fantasy novel and I'm just really excited about it and also the cover is just so gorgeous. Oh also Rainbow Rowell blurbed it. Rainbow Rowell said, Honest and Sad, A Generation X Story from the Nerd Genius Who Gave Us the Magicians. And I trust Rainbow Rowell with my life, so winning. Next, I finally picked up a book that I have been wanting to read for probably half a decade and I just keep putting it off because it just looks like a really daunting read and that is The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. I finally picked this up because I went to the HarperCollins Fall Preview and Corey Beatty, who is amazing, I will leave his Twitter link down below for you guys, just said that this is basically his favorite book of all time and I was like, you know what, 
I think this is like the world karmically showing me that I have to finally buy this book and finally read it. It's about two best friends who create a superhero comic and you guys know me and my comics so I'm really really excited about finally diving into it. It's just like a brick of a book and it's like literarily written? Literarily? But it feels like I'm gonna be really invested in it when I finally read it so it is kind of going to be daunting to start but I think once I do read it I'm going to absolutely love it. If you've read it comment down below and let me know what you thought of it because I really want to start it soon I just kind of need a push. I finished Six of Crows this month and the day I finished Six of Crows I went out and bought Crooked Kingdom because come on like I mean Seriously guys, I put off reading Six of Crows for a long time because I was like, I'm gonna read the Grisha trilogy first. And then, basically, my friend Kendra that I was talking about earlier was like, you don't have to read the Grisha trilogy first, also you're gonna love Six of Crows. Just pick it up and read it. And so I did, <laughs> and I became obsessed, and I was obsessed. I am still obsessed. I have not finished this book yet because I'm also currently reading Wise Man's Fear at the same time because I apparently like inflicting emotional harm on myself, but seriously, read Six of Crows. I can't really explain this book to you because it's the sequel to Six of Crows, but I'm really excited about it. Also, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous hardcover. And I bought Rogues, which is a short story collection within the fantasy sci-fi genre, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I specifically bought this book because there is a short story in this book written by Patrick Rothfuss about Bast. And Bast is like one of my favorite side characters in the whole series and I'm really excited about reading this. I'm just trying so hard to like put off reading it because I want to have an extra like Kingkiller Chronicles thing to read to like tide me over. But I just, yeah, I bought this giant hardcover just for that, that one short story. Also there's a short story by Neil Gaiman in here whom I love. So I'm really excited. Also maybe I'll find a new author that I really like in here and start reading their stuff. Which is why I specifically love short story collections with multiple authors because I find that I find like new favorites within them. So hopefully this accomplishes that for me because once I finish Wise Man's Fear I'm going to be like searching for my next fantasy read. So my camera died, it's a new day so I'm wearing a new outfit, but I'm going to continue to show you guys all of the books that I got in the last few months. So let's continue. Electronics sometimes fail us. Slash Ashley forgets to charge her camera before she films a 20 minute book haul video. So moving on to the last book that I bought myself in the last few months, and it's actually the most recent book that I bought myself, and that is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. If you guys know anything about me, you know how obsessed I am with the Lunar Chronicle series by Marissa Meyer. I loved that series. This is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, and it's about the Queen of Hearts, and it's her backstory as to how she became the Queen of Hearts, and I'm so excited to finally have my hands on this book. I'm going to dive into it immediately after finishing the books that I'm currently reading. I'm so, 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 so excited. Also, the cover is gorgeous, and the inside is gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this hardcover. Just, I mean, next I have two things to show you guys that were belated birthday gifts from my best friend Katie. You might actually recognize her if you've been watching my channel for a long time. We've done a few collab videos. I will actually leave them linked down below for you guys. But she's been living in France for the last eight months and it feels like she's been gone a million years and I finally saw her for the first time in what seems like forever and she gave me my belated birthday gift and the first present I got is the first volume of Rat Queens in this like beautiful hardcover edition also in French. She got it for me because she knows it's one of my bucket list items to learn French. And then she picked up a notebook for me from Shakespeare and Co. And I just, I'm just, this was like the perfect gift. Literally the perfect gift. I was so excited when I received it. I'm so excited to fill it up with my thoughts and musings and just everything is amazing. She is the best. And the last thing I have to show you guys before I show you books that I received from either publishers or events in the last few months is actually a poster that I got from work. I won it as a prize and I've been eyeing it forever and I was going to buy it for myself soon because I wanted it so bad. And it's this 100 Essential Books poster and it's a scratch poster. So basically it has the 100 Essential Novels to read uh, before you die and then once you read the book, you get to scratch it and I'm so excited. It's really, really, really pretty and I can't wait to put it up in my living room and I can't wait to start scratching books off of it. I actually haven't scratched anything. I have read some of these. I just haven't scratched any of them yet because I haven't put it up yet because I really wanted to show you guys, 
but I'm so excited about it and I love it so much. If I can find a copy of this online somewhere, I will leave it linked down below for you guys because I feel like a lot of you guys will also really, really like this. Okay, so that is it for books and bookish things that I got for myself this month. Now we're gonna move on to books that I got from publishers and events, starting with books that I got from HarperCollins Canada. Most of the books I'm about to show you guys I actually received from a HarperCollins Canada event, the first of which is Every Hidden Thing by Kenneth Opal. This book is described as Romeo and Juliet meets Indiana Jones, and it follows two main characters who are both trying to find the first bones of a T-Rex. It's supposed to be very well written and very well plotted and it's been getting nothing but rave reviews and I can't wait to pick it up. It's a Canadian author. Also, I got to meet Kenneth Opal at this event and he was so, so, so nice. So I'm really, really excited about this one. If you have read it or you're interested in it, make sure to comment down below and let me know because I've actually never read anything by Kenneth Opal before. So this would be my first Kenneth Opal book. Next, we have a book that has actually been on my like want to read list for a really long time. And that is Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down by Anne Valenti. This book follows four teenagers in a small town where there was a school shooting and they're all on the yearbook committee and they're trying to figure out how to kind of document and commemorate that event in the yearbook and then all of a sudden these series of arsons start happening and it's just how these kids are dealing with what happened to them on that day and how it's affecting them in present day and I've heard really good things about this. Also, I've read the first little bit of it and the writing style is really great and I actually can't wait to read this. The main reason I haven't picked it up yet is that I know it's gonna be heart-wrenching and I just haven't really been in the mood for a tearjerker, but when I am, I'm definitely going to be picking this one up. Also, this cover. I'm just such a fan of covers with amazing typography on them. I can't get enough of them. I wish there was more of them. Then I picked up a copy of Replica by Lauren Oliver. This is actually a book that you can read either way, which I think is crazy. It follows two main characters, Gemma and Lyra. One of them has grown up basically inside a like scientific box, and the other one has grown up with their parents who keeps them pretty sheltered, and it follows what happens when you find out that these two girls are actually connected in some way but they each have their own individual story and the really cool part about this book is that you can either read it all one way and then all the other way or chapter by chapter so you could read all of Lyra's story and never read Gemma's story and be fine or you could read like Lyra's story and then Gemma's story or you could read like each chapter alternating throughout the whole thing I think it's really cool, it's a really cool concept. Also, the plot of the novel intrigues me because it seems as though there's going to be some kind of sci-fi-ish elements to it. So I'm excited about this. It is a bit of a brick of a book, but I'm really excited about diving into it soon. Then I got a copy of Fireworks by Katie Catugno. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know how much I love Katie's novels. I've given pretty much all of her books that I've read five out of fives. I adored them. When I found out that she had a new one coming out, I had to get my hands on it. This one, however, unlike the other ones that I've read in the past, is more based on friendship relationships and the dynamics of this friendship and how certain things come between the friendship and how they kind of come through that. Whereas her last two books have been very like relationship based, like partner spouse kind of relationship versus friendship relationship. So I'm excited to see how she dives into this topic matter instead of the other one. And I'm really, 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 really excited about this. Then we have Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. This has been on my radar for a really, really long time. It sounds so cool. It follows a world where everything has a spirit, leaves, rivers, trees, animals, everything. And in this world, all of those nature things, like the animals, the trees, the leaves, they're trying to kill off all of the humans. It looks so good. Also, it got a rave review from someone that I really, really, really trust. So yes, just all of the yes. And last but not least, HarperCollins sent me a copy of Buffering by Hannah Hart. If you guys don't know who Hannah Hart is, she's amazing. I will leave her YouTube channel linked down below. She's also just really inspiring and I just really, really love her. And I feel like she has this way of talking about things in a way that's like funny, but also like, please listen, this is important. So I'm really excited about reading this book. You guys know me, I'm not a really big nonfiction person. I actually really don't read a lot of nonfiction but I am really, really intrigued by this one and I'm actually really excited to pick it up. Okay, so that's it for books that I got from HarperCollins Canada and HarperCollins events this past few months. Next, we're gonna move on to books that I got from Penguin Random House 
and or from Penguin Random House events this month. So many books in the last few months. It's insane. Okay, let's go. The first book I have to show you guys is A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Clues. This follows a young girl who is the first female sorceress in ages and she is apparently supposed to be like this prophesized person, but is she actually that person? It looks really good. You know me, I'm a sucker for a really good magic story. It takes place in a school, which is just like an added bonus. And again, it's a book that's been getting a lot of hype recently, so I'm really excited about seeing how I feel about it. Next, Penguin Random House Canada sent me a copy of The Inquisitor's Tale by Adam Guidewitz. I actually don't really know anything about this book, aside from that it's a middle grade fantasy fairy tale-ish kind of book. I don't really need to know much more than that because I am a sucker for a really good fairy tale-ish fantasy, so that's pretty much all I really need to know. Penguin also sent me the full series of Marie Lou's Young Elites. I haven't read any of these yet, but I've heard really, really good things about them, again, from friends of mine who I really, really trust. If you've read this series, please comment down below and let me know because I've actually never read anything by Marie Lou before, and I don't really know much about this series aside from that it's a YA, like, fantasy, maybe dystopian? I don't even know whether it's fantasy or dystopian. I don't know much about it at all. Then Penguin Random House Canada sent me a copy of Amy McKay's Witches of New York. I like pretty much any story that takes place in New York. I'm obsessed with New York. You guys know this. I don't know much about this except for that it's a historical fiction novel that kind of bases itself around this idea of how people used to view the idea of witches. And also I've never read anything by Amy McKay, but Amy McKay gets lots and lots and lots of praise on a regular basis, so that's exciting. I also got a copy of Margaret Atwood's Hagseed. This is Margaret Atwood's retelling of The Tempest. I don't really need to say much more than that. It's a direct retelling of The Tempest. And Margaret Atwood is an award-winning Canadian author, so that's pretty much, that was enough to sell me. Then I received a copy of The Mothers by Britt Bennett. This cover is so great. The typography, the design, just so good. I'm not gonna lie, I was originally drawn by the cover, but then I read the synopsis and it sounded really, really good. It looks like it's going to be this like really great character-driven drama, and I love really good character-driven dramas. Also, the first line of the synopsis on the back is, it begins with a secret. What a great first line! Just, ex I'm sold. I was really excited about it. Also, like, the cover though. Seriously. Then I received one of my most anticipated reads of 2016, and that is What Light by Jay Asher. Jay Asher wrote 13 Reasons Why, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I've read it like six times. It makes me cry every time. I think it should be mandatory reading in high school, to be honest with you. This book, however, looks much lighter than 13 Reasons Why, but I loved Jay Asher's writing style, so I'm really excited to see if that continues in this. This is about a young girl whose family owns a Christmas tree farm, and every year she has to move around Christmas time in order to sell Christmas trees because her family owns a Christmas tree farm. So it's about what happens to her because she constantly has to move around Christmas time, so she doesn't really feel Christmas the way that a lot of other people do. There's a little bit of romance that goes on in it, but it looks really exciting, and I like, I love good, like, feel good romances around Christmas time, so I'm excited to dive into this once, like, snow is on the ground, and I feel, like, whimsical and happy all the time. And last but not least, Penguin Random House Canada sent me an advanced copy of Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. This book is a dual narrated novel. Not gonna lie, that's all I needed to hear to be like, yep, I would like a copy of that, please. You guys know that dual narrated novels are pretty much my favorite narrative style. I really like multiple narratives. I think that when they're well done, it's just the best kind of book to read. This book follows Libby, who is titled The World's Fattest Teenager, and then it also follows Jack, who suffers from a disorder where he can't differentiate people's faces. So he doesn't identify someone by their face. And it basically follows what happens to these two people when they meet each other and how they kind of alter each other's view of the world. I haven't read it yet, but my best friend Mel has read it and she loved it, so hearing that makes me want to pick it up even sooner. And the last thing that I have to show you guys in this haul is actually not a book, it's a mug that I received from a Penguin Random House Canada event, and that is this Penguin Classics Great Gatsby mug. 
Great Gatsby is one of my all-time favorite books. I know that it's one of those books that people either love or hate, but I'm a hopeless romantic and I loved that book like crazy. I hated it in high school when I first read it, but upon rereading it in the last few years, I fell in love with F. Scott Fitzgerald. So this mug was basically the best thing that could have happened to me at that book event and I'm so excited to have it. I don't even want to use it to put coffee in it. I kind of just want to like put it on my bookshelf and like display it for the world to see on a regular basis because I just love it so very, very much. This is literally a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, so those are all of the books that I got this fall, whether it be that I bought them or got them from publishers. This is probably the biggest book haul I've ever had, I think. It's pretty big. If you have read or want to read any of these books, please comment down below and let me know. And otherwise, I will see you guys soon with another video. Happy reading. Bye! Seriously though, how am I gonna put these back down without ruining any of them? Ah! No. Hey everyone, it's Ashley and today I have a really exciting video. Today I'm going to be doing the rapid fire book tag with Victoria Schwab. Hi. I will not be doing the tag, I will just be asking the questions, but we're going to get to know a lot of bookish things about Victoria, so let's I'm get so started. Nervous. I haven't seen these questions in advance, <laughs> so. <laughs> Number one. Mm -hmm. Ebook or physical book? Physical book. I own a Kindle. It's my original Kindle's name is Judas because I felt so bad about using it. 